Hi, my name is Mohit Gupta and I am working as a machine learning engineer for geeks for geeks In this lecture, we'll be talking about data in machine learning and its importance. So before starting our lecture, I'll be presenting you some facts so that you can imagine why data is so much important for us. So less than 0.5% of all data we create is ever analyzed and used. So you can imagine that we are using such a small amount of data, but using that also we are creating so much of machines, we are improving our machine learning models. Also, if we can increase 10% of data that we are actually accessing, it will result in more than $65 million additionally net income for the typical Fortune 1000 company. By now, 1.7 megabyte of new information is being created every second for every human on the planet. This is the amount of data that we actually are using. Also, 1 billion pieces of content are shared via Facebook's open graph every day. So this is the level of data that we are actually preparing and we are using. So with such an amount of data, we have some responsibilities too. Because bad data can cost US business alone $600 billion annually, which is such a huge amount of data we have to focus on. So now you can clearly imagine that why I am preparing this video and why I am teaching you about the importance of data in machine learning. So let's begin with our lecture. There are three important terms that come into mind when we are talking about data. Number one is data itself, information and knowledge. So we have three terms, data, information, knowledge. Well, data is unprocessed facts and figures. Suppose we have a data 2.137.7.2. So we can't say what this data actually is. This is just figures. There is no information, there is no knowledge with this data. These are just unprocessed facts and figures. But now, if I say that these values are pH values, then I have added context with my data. So data plus context. This is information. Right? So initially we were having data. Now we have added the context. So now we can say that this data is pH values. Right? So now this data is becoming a information. So data with context is information. And for a data to be called as information, data must be contextualized, categorized, calculated and condensed. That's very important when we want to say that yes, we have information with us. Now moving on to knowledge. Information plus certain rules gives us knowledge. So knowledge is understanding, explanation, insight, intuition and contextualized information. So what it means is information plus rules is knowledge. Right? So this was the data. We added context and we build up our information. And now I'm adding certain rules. What are those rules? If pH value is greater than 7, then it's basic. Then the substance that we are talking about is basic. If pH is equals to 7, then the substance is neutral. And if the pH value is less than 7, then the substance is acidic. So now if we are given a data 7, we say that this is a pH value. It becomes information. This is pH value. And since it is equal to 7, it is neutral. So that's the knowledge. Similarly, if we say that we were given 3, so 3 is less than 7, that means it is acidic. So that's the clear difference between these three terms, data, information, knowledge. Data plus context is information, information plus rules is knowledge. And now we'll be talking about types of data that we have. Broadly, we have two types of data. One is categorical data and numerical data. Categorical data is also known as qualitative data 
and numerical data is known as quantitative data. If we further divide categorical data, it has two subtypes that is nominal data, ordinal data and the numerical data quantitative one has two types discrete data and continuous data. So let's talk about each of these terms individually. Well nominal data is a categorical data with no numerical ordering. What I mean to say is let's take an example male female these are gender right but we can't say that male is greater than female or female is greater than male right since we have this data but there is no ordering we can't say that this is greater than this or this is greater than this these are just simple data labels so we define them as nominal data let's take another example black brown white gray let's say these are hair color right and in this case also we can't say that black is greater than brown or brown is greater than white or white is greater than gray so there is no natural ordering between this data so we label these data sets as nominal data now we'll be talking about ordinal data so that second type of categorical data this data has discrete values but with a natural ordering so we have very bad bad okay good excellent now these are data labels let's say that's the service quality data okay but you can easily tell that okay is a neutral behavior and these two labels are going towards positivity this label is going towards negativity right so very bad is more negative than bad excellent is more positive than good so you can clearly order these labels so this kind of data is known as ordinal data so we now know what is nominal data categorical data with no natural ordering and ordinal data is a categorical data within natural ordering and now we'll be talking about numerical data numerical data is a quantitative data which has two types one is discrete and the other one is continuous in case of discrete we have fixed labels suppose let's take an example of grades that a student score so it can be a a plus a b b plus c c plus going till let's say e right so now in case of this data we have fixed label a plus a b b plus so we know that the output will be from either of these values right so that's why we called it as discrete but in case of continuous we have a range let's say one to thousand dollars let's say this is the price of a gadget the data we are taking is the price of gadgets so that this data can be any value from this range it need not to be discrete it can be 1.2 1.25 100 101 101.101 so these values are continuous in a range 1 to 1000 but it's not discrete these data labels can be any value in this range that's why we call it as continuous data so discrete data is the one with unique labels that we know that the outcome will be from these labels only and continuous data is fixed in a given range but it can have any value like the price of gadgets price of a property right so this this was all about numerical data now we have few more terms associated with the topic data in machine learning so let's talk about interval data well you have studied about ordinal data which was qualitative data with natural ordering right so we had bad okay good very good right so we knew that okay was neutral good very good was were positive bad was negative but what we don't know is how good how positive 
this label is from this label. So we don't know the clear difference between these two labels, right? But in case of interval data, we have natural ordering, but with a difference gap, with a known difference gap. So let's talk about the pH values. So seven, and let's take a scale of 0.5, okay? So seven, 7.5, eight, here 6.5, six. So we know that this is neutral value. That's basic. And that's acidic. So less than seven, we are going towards acidic. Less than okay, we are going towards a negative behavior. More than okay, we are going towards a positive attitude. More than seven, we are going towards basic behavior. But in this case, we know that there is a clear difference of 0.5. There is a clear difference of 0.5. But these were qualitative values. This is a quantitative value. So we can define a clear interval. But in case of qualitative data, we don't have any particular interval. So this was about interval data. So the last term we are talking about is time data. In case of this data, we can have dates, for example, 27 September 2019, 17 October 2019. So these are date formats in the form date, month and year, right? Also, we can have this data in the form of time with clear distinguishable AM or PM and the week. That is whether this weekday was Sunday, Tuesday, Friday. So this is the kind of data that's come under time domain, right? So this was all about data why data is important and the different types of data we have. So this was all for this lecture. So if you like our video, give a thumbs up to our channel, share with your friends, comment down below, subscribe to our channel and for more information, follow the link given in the description box. Thank you.